So commonly, affect is used as a verb and effect is used as the result. So in a business context, you might say, what will be the effect of the new CEO on the business? Or you might ask, how will the new CEO affect the business? Uh, so that gives you a clue on why I'm so fascinated with them, because the affect is the doing and the changing and the effect is what has happened. It also says why we favour the effect because it's happened and we can measure it and we believe that if it can't be measured then it doesn't exist and that hasn't got us very far as far as workplace culture goes. So let's use Velcro as a really good example. So there's a naturalist who gets grass seeds caught in his socks and rather than get angry at the natural world, he is inspired by the natural world and he thinks of a way to use that and turn it into a product and out comes Velcro. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Which is a really good example because I do think that creativity is the opposite of being destructive. And so if you're getting angry at something or frustrated at something, uh, then your creative brain shuts down. And that means that you will look very narrowly at a problem and you won't see the other options. Uh, so. If you can think creatively, then you can see more options, you can see more ways around things, you can try things quickly and then inexpensively, and if they don't work, try something else. It's only when we see one option that we get really attached to it and we really force it to work and we don't see all the problems and we spend a lot of money on it and we lose a lot of money when it doesn't work. So, think of the work day like uh, 18 holes of golf. So, if you let the last 12 shots you've played affect the way you play the next shot, then you are letting all of those factors, which are actually irrelevant to the shot you're about to play, influence the outcome. So if they're terrible shots, the next shot is going to be a terrible shot. And it doesn't have to be that way. So if the emotions aren't relevant to the actual circumstances, then they should be let go of. But if they are relevant to the actual circumstances, then they can be harnessed and they can drive sort of exponential growth. Because affect is not linear. It's organic and exponential. Inspiring action is something I've gotten known for doing. I feel a lot of pressure for doing it, um, especially in large organisations, because it's really dependent on people in front of the individual or above the individual if it's a hierarchical structure granting permission for them to try things without knowing what the outcome of those efforts are going to be. So creating a space in front of the individual to play with low interest at stake, low threat, low fear. And that's really hard to do. So it's to inspire action, you have to create the environment around the individual so that they can work creatively into it. I think the barrier to embracing critical feedback is that people hear the word critical, 
but their brain processes the word criticism. And that immediately makes them defensive. On the flip side, the person actually giving the feedback, they know that feeling. And so when they go to give the feedback, you'll often hear them take a really short, sharp breath from their chest. They'll go, so I need to talk to you about this. When I go, you immediately go back. And that's the beginning of the conversation. So when you're delivering the feedback, being calm, so you're not sending any signals that this is going to be criticism. No, this is critical feedback, i.e. it's asking questions about the way we're doing things around here, not just you personally. So the other person doesn't immediately go into a defensive position, but hopefully goes forward and engages with the conversation.